Greetings and welcome. Uh, so I'm going to do a couple examples of dividing radicals. Uh, one is a review problem that you've probably seen before, something like. Uh, so if I have something like uh, 2 square roots of 5 divided by, say, I don't know, uh, 3 square roots of 7. Um, one of the rules we have as mathematicians is we don't allow a radical in a denominator. So one of the ways we can deal with that is multiplying it by something that's going to get rid of that square root. In this case, it's a square root, so I'd want to multiply it by something that will give me a 7 squared on the inside. If it was a cubed root, I'd multiply it by something that would give me a 7 cubed and so forth. So uh, what I'm going to multiply it by, well, I'm multiplying by something equivalent to 1, so I'm not changing the value of this. I'm just changing the way that it looks. And if I multiply by something over itself that's equivalent to 1, so that's a, a legal move that I can do. And it turns out what I could do is if I multiply rad 7 by rad 7, that would give me rad 7 squared, right? Uh, and that would simplify. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 7 over the square root of 7 in order to simplify this. And I just want to point out this 3 I'm cool with. So I don't need to have like this 3 here. Um, that's not a problem to leave that 3 there because there's no square root. Uh, around it, right? So uh, so let's multiply this. So this is 2 square roots of 35 over um, 2 times, I guess I'll write this out, 7 squared. Uh, I could write that as 49, whatever you want. But what's going to happen is that this square root will cancel out with a square, and I'll be left with 2 times 7 on the bottom. Oh wait, sorry, 3. That was a 3, isn't it? Uh, so that's 2 square roots of 35 all over uh, 3 times 7 is 21. And now if anything could simplify here, we would. Um, between the 2 and the 21, there's nothing in common. And I want to point out, I can't simplify these two because one is in a radical and one is not. And even if they were both in radicals, they'd have to have the same index in order for me to simplify. So that's kind of the, the basic way of, this is also... Uh, this type of simplifying of getting a radical out of the de denominator is also known as rationalizing. Forgive the lag on my writing here. Rationalize the denominator would be another, let's see, denominator is another name for this process of getting radicals out of denominators. So let's consider a uh, more challenging example. Um, what if I have 1 plus the square root of 3 all over uh, 2 minus the square root of 5? Um, so the issue we have with this problem is the square root of 5, right? And you might be tempted to once again multiply it by something like this, rad 5 over rad 5. However, when I do that, I would have had to distribute, and sure, it would kill this one, but it would actually create a 2 rad 5 there, and that would be a problem. So it turns out we actually have to find an alternative uh, method to multiply by, and we're going to rely on one of our patterns from back in the day, uh, which conveniently is going to kill at least square roots. Uh, for us in denominators. So this is the sum and difference pattern, which equals the uh, difference of squares pattern, right? Uh, and what I want to point out is that notice the difference of squares, every term within it is squared. So if my a's and b's happen to have square roots in them, it wouldn't matter. It, squaring those would get rid of the square roots. So this is the idea. Uh, if I can multiply this by its other friend here, these are, by the way, called conjugates of one another, all right? They are not opposite. Um, actually, I'll write a little step here, maybe. So step one, well, I'll, I'll write it over here. We will multiply, man, it's just not taking my writing here today, by the conjugate. All right, so a conjugate is not an opposite. It's just where the middle sign changed. And what we're doing when we do that is it is going to create this pattern, which results in squaring 
the things within our denominator and uh, kind of taking care of that for us. So the conjugate here would be 2 plus the square root of 5 over 2 plus the square root of 5. And now when I do this, I'm going to have to be very careful um, recognizing that these uh, fraction bars or vinculums are types of grouping symbols and even though these parentheses are not listed, they are fully implied. So I'd end up having to properly foil these out in all, right? in all the sense of the word. So I have to be very careful with that. So let's let's do some foiling here, or double distribution. So 1 times 2 is 2, uh, 1 times root 5 is plus rad 5, rad 3 times 2 is plus 2 rad 3, and rad 3 times 5 is plus the square root of 15. All over. Uh, and now in the bottom I could double distribute or foil, um, but instead I'm going to just rely on this pattern because I, I, I forced it to be the pattern. That's kind of what my goal was. And uh, so it's going to be 2 squared minus rad 5 squared, right? Because A was the 2, B was the square root of 5 in, the, in this pattern here. Um, and so what I'll have, let's see, my numerator, is there anything I can simplify? Uh, none of the radicals have perfect squares that can go into them. None of these are like radicals. So it turns out that numerator is the same. Actually, what I'm going to just do is abbreviate that as n for now, because I know I'm not done. 2 squared is 4 uh, minus rad 5 squared is 5. So what I'm going to be left with is my numerator all over negative 1. Um, now, in this case, I actually, in most every case, I'd rather not leave a minus sign in uh, my denominator. So I'm just going to move the minus sign upstairs and that's just going to change the signs of the entire numerator. So that would give me uh, negative 2 minus the square root of 5 minus 2 roots of 3 uh, minus the square root of 15. And this is technically still all over 1 but I don't have to write that because dividing by 1 is going to give me itself. So I've gotten rid of, in this case, I've gotten rid of the fraction entirely. That won't always be the case. But uh, at the very least, it will have killed any radicals in my denominator. So if this was like a 7 or something, this would have just been still all over 7. Something like that. All right, so that's the idea. Uh, so this is a little bit trickier, this kind of example. And the way it works is you have to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of your denominator. All right, so it's not the same sign, it's not the opposite, it's the middle sign changes, okay, and that's the only difference. And then uh, we just foil it out and deal with it as normal. And uh, I allow my students to take this one shortcut rather than having to rewrite this whole thing over and over and over. It's a lot of unnecessary work. All right, so uh, thank you kindly for watching and have a great day.